Shall we bow down our heads in prayer? Father, prepare our hearts and minds for your word, which is coming to us. Speak through me to your children. So that we'll leave you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. There are two questions that I want you to keep at the back of your minds as we look at today's passage. passage. And the question is from Mark chapter 10, verse 51a. What do you want me to do for you? Ask Jesus. Jesus is asking you and I this morning. What do you want me to do for you? And the second question is, are you ready? to see? Are you ready to receive the blessing you're asking for? Are you ready to accept the challenge that might come with the blessing? Are you ready to um, for the responsibility that might come with that blessing? So let's keep this at the back of our minds as the sermon goes on. In today's sermon, we will look at the character of Bartimaeus and the implications of his actions. Bartimaeus was a beggar. A little history about why Bartimaeus was a beggar, according to the NIV study Bible, is that because most, of, most occupations of that time required physical labor, anyone with crippling disease or disability was at a severe disadvantage and was usually forced to beg. And also blindness was also considered a curse when we look at um, John chapter 9 verse 2. It reads, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned with this man or his parents that he was born blind? With Bartimaeus being blind, which is considered a curse, I don't think someone would want to employ him. And even if someone did, he couldn't see it, so he was not capable to work due to his disability. So all he had left to do in order to survive was to bear. But Tobias was at his post begging when he heard Jesus of Nazareth passing by. Having heard from people what miracles Jesus was doing, but Timaeus decided to give it a try to get Jesus' attention. He shouted from where he was because without help, he would not be able to get to Jesus. The people around him rebuked him and told him to be quiet because to them he was distracting and was not behaving appropriately by shouting. By shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. You would think they would have compassion for him because he was just shouting for, because he was not just shouting for shouting's sake, but was asking Jesus to have mercy on him. Did Bartimaeus allow their rebuke to bother him? No. He shouted all the more until he got heard by Jesus. And Jesus asked him to come forward. But Samuel recognized Jesus as his Savior from what he had heard from him. He didn't have to see it. He didn't have to see what was going on around him. What he had heard about Jesus opened his spiritual eyes to see him as his Savior and Lord. So when Bartimaeus was calling Jesus to get his attention, he knew what he was calling for. The people who rebuilt him could physically see, but were spiritually blind. So they couldn't see who Jesus truly was. Do you think the people who were rebuking Bartimaeus had no issues? They did, but they did not know that Jesus could heal them because they did not know him. The faith of Bartimaeus ushered him to call for Jesus' attention to him. Bartimaeus also showed a sign of boldness and determination. He kept shouting for Jesus even though the entire crowd around him were asking him to be quiet. It could have been easily, he could have easily It could have been easy for 
for Bartimaeus not to even attempt to shout because there was a large crowd in front of him and he would have not put in more effort to shout to be heard. He could have easily given up because the, the people were asking him to be quiet when he decided to speak for help. But he did not let the obstacles in front of him prevent him from getting his blessing. Jesus finally heard Bartimaeus cry for help, cry for mercy. And what did he ask him? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Do you think Jesus did not know why Bartimaeus was calling him? He did, but he still asked him, What do you want me to do for you? If it was you and I, what would our answer be? Jesus is asking us this morning, What do you want me to do for you? Have you thought of your answer yet? Or are you still thinking about it? Do you think Bartimaeus did not have other issues? He did. But what was his most important need? Not what? His most important need. Not what he wanted. As human beings, we want a lot of things, but we really need them. How would what you are asking for impact your life and the lives of the people around you? But to be honest, you didn't ask for a selfish thing. Because when he starts to see, he will not be able to beg anymore. He will not be at the mercy of others. He might be able to help others when he sees. So he didn't act selfishly. What you are asking God for, is it a selfish need? Is it a selfish want? How would what you are asking for impact your life and the lives of the people around you? When we look at our uh, Mark chapter 10 verse 35, I believe to 45, um, James and John asked Jesus that like in, in his glory, one of them wants to sit at his right hand side and then the other wants to sit at his left. How does that impact the lives of people? They wanted fame. That was what James and John asked God. They wanted fame. But after getting that fame, how does it impact their lives or the lives of the people around them? But to me, as you knew, receiving his eyesight would bring much opportunities and responsibilities. But he still asked for it. Having his eyesight means now he can work. The fiscal labor that the others were doing. Now he could see, so he had no excuse. That would keep him from working. People will not have sympathy on him and give him money again because he can work to provide for himself. Now he can't blame others if he has no food to eat or close to work. He is now responsible for his well-being. If it were to you and I, we might want to remain where we are because it's a comfortable position. You don't have to work to, to eat. All you have to do is get up, sit in a particular place, and either sing, and people walking around will put something in your plate. But Samuel was comfortable. So why did he ask to see? Knowing these responsibilities 
would you want to see if you were Bartimaeus? Mark chapter 10 verse 15 reads that on. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. I don't know how heavy Bartimaeus' cloak was, but he did not want anything to hold him back when Jesus asked him to come forward. He wanted to get there as quick as he can. Jesus Christ is ready for you and I. What is holding us back? Would you like to be Bartimaeus and throw it aside to get to Jesus? Or would you let it slow you down? Jesus Christ is passing by today. Would you miss the opportunity he has given you or let it go? <coughs> or let go of what is holding you back and run to him? Is what, you're holding, is what holding you back very important to you? And how is it affecting your life? Are you ready today to see? Are you ready to let go of what is holding you back? For God to bless you. Mark chapter um, 10 verse 52 says that, Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, Jesus, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The faith of Bartimaeus filled him as Jesus said in the verse above. Do you have faith in God? How is your faith in God? Do you have do you believe that God can do anything and everything? Do you know that nothing is impossible with the God you are you and I serve? Jesus Christ asked Bartimaeus to go to go. But what did Bartimaeus do? He did not go away from God. When he received his sight, he immediately followed along the road with Jesus. He did not go away. He followed him. He became a disciple of Christ. He did not say to himself, now I can see. Let me go and explore the world around me. Celebrate my new eyesight. Work and obtain wealth because now I can work. He did not say either of these, but he followed Christ. Even though that was not the commandment God gave to him, he said, Go. But he followed. So when you receive a blessing that you are asking for, would you follow Christ or would you go away from his presence? Are you ready to see? Is the question. What do you want God to do for you? And when you receive that blessing, are you ready? Are you ready with the responsibility that will come with seeing? But Tamiya's faith encouraged him to take a step by asking Jesus to have mercy on him. What step is your faith asking you to take this morning? Remember that there will be obstacles to prevent you from taking that step. But just as Bartimaeus was bold and determined, would you be bold and determined? Would you shout louder to pass the crowds of voices that are telling you to be quiet? Or would you Listen to the crowd and be quiet. Jesus is asking you and I this morning, what do you want me to do for you? Be careful of what you ask though, because it comes with responsibilities. Are you ready to see?
Are you ready to accept the calling that God is calling you? Are you ready to leave everything behind and follow Christ? Are you ready to give your all to follow Christ? I know of a lady who God blessed with the voice to sing. And when that lady stands here to sing, there's goosebumps everywhere, like you feel the presence of God in her ministry. But she let it get to her so much that she concentrated on the fame that came with the talent that God has given her. And so it got to a point that when she is called to sing in church, she's like, why don't you call the other person? Why me all the time? This lady did this for several times. And eventually she lost that voice. God gave it to her for a purpose. She didn't use it for that purpose. What are you asking God for this morning? Are you ready to use it? Are you ready to accept the challenges that might come with that blessing? Don't let, it, don't let the, the blessing get to you so much, but use it to accomplish His calling.